Got milk? If you grew up any time in the last 100 years or so, you've likely heard that phrase. There was a time every celebrity sported a milk mustache in ads, telling us milk does a body good. Well, today I'm calling bullshit on Big Dairy. In a world veiled by corporate greed, one woman stands between bullshit and the truth. This is the I Call Bullshit Podcast. This is the great milk myth. Do we really need milk for strong bones? Or was that a creamy white lie churned out by the dairy industry? I just grossed myself out by that. Let's dive in, maybe with a lactase pill if you're lactose intolerant, which, fun fact, most of the world is. Milk does a body good, or does it? First, a bit of history. In the 1980s, the dairy industry hit us with the slogan, milk, it does a body good plastered it everywhere. By the 90s, it evolved into the uber-successful Got Milk campaign. You remember those ads from Michael Jordan to Britney Spears with milk mustaches. Those campaigns were funded by a USDA-backed program called Checkoff, basically a pool of money from dairy farmers used to promote milk like crazy. The USDA, our nutrition watchdog, was literally partnering with dairy marketers. Conflict of interest much? They pushed the idea that milk is essential, especially for kids' growth and adults' bone health. Drink your three glasses a day or your bones will snap, basically. While it's true that milk has calcium and vitamin D when fortified and protein. But here's the thing. Nowhere is it biologically ordained that humans must drink cow's milk. In fact, humans are the only species that drinks the milk of another animal beyond infancy. It's kind of weird when you think about it, right? And get this, most humans can't even properly digest milk after childhood. Around 65% of the world's adults are lactose intolerant to some degree, meaning they don't have the enzyme lactase to break down the sugar lactose. In populations of East Asia, for example, that figure can be over 90%. Even in the U.S., about 36% of people have t trouble digesting lactose. So for many, that tall glass of milk is a one-way ticket to bloatville or worse, toilet town. Yet the dairy lobby conveniently ignores this, acting like milk is universally perfect. Christopher Gardner, a nutrition scientist at Stanford, points out an interesting example. Countries like Japan and India, where most people are lactose intolerant, have lower rates of bone fractures than the U.S. Wait, let me, let me repeat that. Countries like Japan and India, where most people are lactose intolerant, have lower rates of bone fractures than the U.S. They don't guzzle cow's milk. They get their calcium from other foods. And crucially, they do a lot of weight-bearing activity. Now, Gardner flat out calls the you need multiple servings of dairy for a healthy diet message a myth started by the National Dairy Council's marketing in schools, not an established scientific fact. Boom. So how did milk get such a healthy halo? Enter big dairy and government hand in hand once again, as we've learned. The USDA has historically been very, very cozy with the dairy industry. They even buy up surplus milk and cheese to prop up prices. I mean, have you ever heard of government cheese? In the 1980s, the U.S. literally had a cheese stockpile of over 500 million pounds stored in caves because of dairy subsidies. This is not a joke. Dairy farmers produce more milk than we drink. So the USDA has often bailed them out and then tried to solve the surplus by encouraging more consumption. The food pyramid that we just trashed an episode ago gave dairy its own special section, implicitly saying you must consume dairy daily. Now, as we learned from that episode, this was no accident. Dairy lobbyists made sure milk and cheese weren't lumped with protein or other foods. They wanted the standalone pedestal. And in reality, you can get calcium elsewhere. But putting dairy as an essential food group imprinted on generations that a meal isn't complete without milk. Now, I'll be the first to admit, my husband is one of these people. I mean, that man will have a glass of milk with, like, every meal if he could. I Me, mean, not so much. Let's talk lobbying muscle. The dairy lobby is huge, guys. They've got trade groups like Dairy Management Inc. and the National Dairy Council, and they spend millions 
on influencing policy and perceptions. You remember those school lunch requirements that until recently forced schools to offer milk? Yep, you can thank dairy lobbying for that one as well. And then the USDA's checkoff program has pumped out pro-milk propaganda for decades, with essentially government blessing. It's actually infuriatingly clever is what it is. Farmers are required to pay into it, and then that money is used to run ads and education campaigns, quote unquote, telling you to drink more milk. And it works. Milk consumption might have declined from the 1970s when it was basically in every home, but the U.S. still guzzles a lot of dairy. Meanwhile, the government also subsidizes dairy heavily, from price supports to buying off the excess. And so, so our tax dollars help produce the milk, our tax dollars help promote the milk, and then our tax dollars deal with the health consequences of maybe too much milk. What a system. All right, on to the big claim. You need milk for strong bones. This has been drilled into us. Calcium builds bone, milk has calcium, ergo chug milk, or you risk osteoporosis. But independent research doesn't fully back this up. Calcium and vitamin D are vital, yes. But you can get calcium from leafy greens, fortified plant milks, tofu, almonds, sardines, etc. And vitamin D from sunlight or supplements. Milk is a source, not the source. Studies have shown that while drinking milk can increase bone density a bit, it doesn't necessarily prevent fractures. A bombshell came out in 2014 when a huge Swedish cohort study over 100,000 people found that women who drank a lot of milk, three or more glasses a day, had actually higher rates of fractures and mortality than those who drank little. Wait, higher fractures with more milk? Yes, you heard that right. The researchers speculated that the natural sugars in milk, lactose and galactose, might increase oxidative stress and inflammation, possibly harming bones and overall health. Now, that was an observational study. It doesn't prove causation, and the authors cautioned everyone not to overinterpret it, but it certainly pours milk all over the more is better mantra. Even the Harvard School of Public Health has pointed out that the recommended three servings a day of dairy is not scientifically justified. Dr. Willer Willett of Harvard has been a vocal critic of the dairy push, saying there's no clear evidence that high dairy intake protects against fractures, and populations that drink little milk often actually have less osteoporosis than we do. In fact, some studies link excess dairy or animal protein to calcium loss, a controversial idea that eating a lot of animal protein could leach calcium from bones. Now on that, the science is mixed, but the point is the rock solid certainty that milk equals strong bones is flimsy at best. And consider this, bone strength isn't just about calcium. Weight bearing exercise is hugely important. Remember, astronauts in zero gravity lose bone despite high calcium intake. Other nutrients like magnesium, vitamin K, and overall protein matter too. The dairy lobby's genius was oversimplifying the narrative to milk equals calcium equals bone, done. That sold a lot of milk, but it wasn't the full story. Let's say you ditch dairy. Can you meet your calcium needs? Absolutely. I'm here to tell you that leafy greens like kale, bok choy, broccoli are all calcium rich and their calcium is often absorbed about as well as dairies. Calcium set tofu, almonds, chia seeds, white beans, canned salmon with bones, there's a buffet of options. Many plant-based milks are fortified to have calcium equal to or higher than cow's milk. Although personally, I can't stand either type of milk. Plant milk is just the worst to me, but I digress. For example, calcium fortified orange juice or soy milk can provide as much calcium per glass as dairy. And so the idea that you'll crumble without cow juice is complete nonsense. Even the USDA now allows that fortified soy milk counts, quote unquote, as a dairy equivalent in guidelines. And that was a fight. The dairy industry definitely grumbled on that one. The current U.S. dietary guidelines still recommend dairy, but they phrase it as a fat-free or low-free, a uh, low-fat milk, yogurt, cheese, or fortified soy beverages. So that's a small victory for common sense in the lactose intolerant. Now, I'm not here to demonize milk completely. If you like it and tolerate it and it's part of your diet, that's fine. Milk does have beneficial nutrients. The issue is the false marketing that milk is magical or essential. 
because it's not. You won't die without it, and you might even be healthier if you opt for plant foods instead. Let's not forget dairy's other health debates. Aside from bones, dairy's impact on heart health, cancer, etc. is actively studied. Some research links high dairy intake with prostate cancer, possibly due to hormones or growth factors in milk. Whole milk dairy can be high in saturated fat, though evidence is mixed on whether dairy fat is as harmful as other animal fats. There's ongoing debate, but none of it conclusively crowns milk as a health elixir. The dairy industry isn't going quietly. Milk consumption per capita has been dropping thanks to more beverage choices and more awareness of lactose intolerance and vegan alternatives. Oat milk, almond milk, soy milk, these are stealing dairy's market. Big Dairy has even lobbied the FDA to restrict non-dairy drinks from using the word milk. So far, that hasn't panned out. We still call almond milk milk. They've campaigned in schools to keep chocolate milk on the menu, arguing that kids will drink that when they'd plan to otherwise avoid plain milk. Another sneaky tactic to still move dairy under the guise of fighting obesity. Go figure. And the USDA still spends boatloads to prop up dairy. A report showed the USDA dropped over $500 million a year on dairy and meat marketing checkoff programs. That's money essentially subsidizing ads like Got Milk and new cheese-heavy fast food items. Fun fact, Dairy Management Inc. helped Pizza Hut develop the cheese-stuffed crust pizza and Taco Bell develop items loaded with extra cheese, all to move more dairy product. So the next time you enjoy a three-cheese stuffed crust pepperoni pizza, thank the USDA, and then maybe your cardiologist. The environmental angle deserves a mention. Dairy farming has a huge carbon and land footprint. As climate concerns rise, some dietary guidelines, like in Canada, have started toning down dairy recommendations. The U.S. didn't, likely due to industry pressure, but you can bet in the future environmental and health evidence will keep challenging big dairy's dominance. What's the takeaway here? The idea that you must drink milk for calcium and health is a myth largely born of marketing. You can live healthily without dairy. If you enjoy it, cool. Just choose low sugar options and don't force it down if your body says no. And if you don't, great. Eat your greens, nuts, and beans. Maybe take a calcium supplement or fortified foods if needed. Your bones won't know the difference. For too long, the dairy lobby had us by the udders, but we're wise to it now. So to Big Dairy's scare tactics and half-truths, I raise a glass of almond milk and I say, I call bullshit. Tune in for the next episode of I Call Bullshit with Christina Brawley. Christina Brawley.